rise and shine. Pour yourself a cup of coffee and tune in to Good Morning Aurora. News, weather, and really cool interviews. Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. The time is 8 o'clock a.m. And you are listening to and watching Good Morning, Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. It is Tuesday, a beautiful Tuesday outside, kind of gray. Uh, I haven't been, I haven't seen outside uh, in about 20 minutes, actually. So I don't know if it's gotten any brighter outside, but it looked a little bit cloudy out there. It looked like it might rain a little bit but uh i hope that you guys are doing good back at the office today or perhaps uh you took another day off after labor day so i hope that you enjoyed your labor day and your labor day weekend should have went out should have had some fun should have went out for first friday saw a lot of you guys out there so if you did we'll talk about what you saw as well the time is 801 um you know tuesday Tuesday is a heck of a day. It's a nice little pre-Wednesday kind of thing. I'll let you know that you're almost at the middle of the week. Tuesday is kind of motivating. It tells you to keep going. You're not done yet. You're not there yet. So keep going. Keep it moving. And we'll see what we can get into. Okay. So um, I've got a great amount, a great amount of local news uh, to give to you guys today. A lot of our friends are in the news. Rep uh, Maura Hershauer is in the news. Barb Hernandez is in the news. We've also got New England Congregational Church in the news as well. All of the things that we need to hear about on a beautiful Tuesday morning. All right. So first things first, I thought this was kind of cool and interesting. Uh, sent over to us. State Rep Maura Hershauer from Batavia's partnership, excuse me, is in partnership with State Rep Fred Crespo of Hoffman Estates, the state rep Seth Lewis of Bartlett, inviting residents to experience the Mobile Museum of Tolerance. This is interesting. The museum will visit Hawk Hollow Elementary School, Sunnydale Elementary School, and Kenyon Woods Middle School from September uh, 6th through the 9th. That's today through Friday. Uh, As we experience a rise in hate crimes nationwide, teaching our children to respect and celebrate people of different races, religions, and cultures is now more important than ever. Education plays a key role in promoting tolerance and civility. And I'm so excited to bring this outstanding educational opportunity to our community, close quote. That's from Rep. Hershauer. The Mobile Museum of Tolerance is an initiative of the Simon Wiesenthal Center aimed at empowering people to stand against racism, anti-Semitism, and all forms of hate. The museum uses technology and interactive lessons to spread the message of tolerance and promote human dignity. Quote, we are all responsible for creating a community where everyone is welcome and respected. I invite everyone to visit and learn from the museum, excuse me, the mobile Museum of Tolerance so we can create a more inclusive community where everyone can thrive. Close quote. Members of the public can visit the museum at Hawk Hollow today from 2.30 to 4 p.m. at 235 Jacaranda Drive in Bartlett or at Sunnydale Elementary School tomorrow from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. at 716 Sunnydale Boulevard in Streamwood. For more information, please contact Rep. Hershauer's office at 331-465-9661. That number again is 331-465-9661. Good stuff. Like to see that. All right. Matt Hansen is here. Good morning to you, Matt Hansen. Jennifer Ryan Maiden, good morning to you as well. So good to see you guys on this Tuesday. I hope that your Tuesday is 
going well. Uh, did you go out? Did anybody go out and see Back to the Future last night at the Paramount for a buck? Hopefully you did. Hopefully you took part. Saw a couple of Instagram stories. The Instagram stories are really cool. Um, so I hope that you guys got a chance to enjoy a movie for a dollar. Not much is going on for a dollar these days in America. So if you can do anything for a buck, I encourage you to do so. The time is 8.05 a.m. All right. Uh, I told you guys yesterday it's worth reiterating now if you're hungry just like me for Taco Tuesday, the Taco Tuesday crawl. This is not today. This will be September the 20th uh, from 2 to 8 p.m. Second year that this has taken place. Downtown Aurora restaurants are participating. Uh, the month of September, Marie Wilkinson's Food Pantry celebrates Hunger Action and Hispanic Heritage Month. We are dedicated to help feed everyone in need for donations or sponsorship opportunities. Email relations at mwfoodpantry.org. That's relations at mwfoodpantry.org. Uh, tickets are early bird special, $25, and the regular price is $30. That includes your Taco Crawl t-shirt and one taco at each participating restaurant. So be sure to bring your appetite. One taco at each restaurant, you're going to have to get your eat on. Okay, uh, so we've shared this flyer around on our social media. There's a QR code that's embedded in the flyer. I admonish you to take part and support this great endeavor marie wilkinson's food pantry does a whole lot in our fantastic community shouts out to them and all that they are doing the time is 806 muhammad hayat good morning to you as well okay so if you went out and saw back to the future last night let me tell you what's coming up next september 12th will be raiders of the lost ark i will be in, in full effect for this one the return of a great adventure September 19th will be Disney's Encanto, presented in Spanish with English subtitles. September 26th will be the original Clue. Uh, it's not just a game anymore from 1985. And then Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas will be October 3rd. So get ready for those great movies. Okay. So uh, I, when I went, so first Friday, let's talk about that. Um, first Friday was a lot of fun. Went out and saw some great things. But we had the Golden Hip Hop Show um, that was at Cotton Sea Creative Exchange, 64 South River Street. Man, that was fantastic. It was really good. Good time. Amy Nelson Photography was there taking pictures. We had meaningful letters. We had fresh gems. We had Isabella artwork there as well. Um, a lot of the community came out. Marissa from um, downtown Aurora came out too so it was really good to see people i went around the corner to uh good news barbershop saw some of the homies over there uh so that was awesome as well i will say this i will say that the crowds crowds are getting bigger big crowds Lots of people, lots of different people, too. Saw a whole lot of new faces in town, and I like to see that kind of stuff. Aurora is a great place. We're doing good as a city, um, and, you know, I, I just want to make sure that we all continue to take part in the city. The next first Friday, please, if you didn't go out this last one, please go out, have a good time, take some selfies somewhere, and shop local. All right. Um, so I've got the New England Congregational Church news I was telling you guys about. Um, and this is something that's brand new, brand new here with this. Uh, and I think this qualifies as that thing we call breaking news. Josue Pais, a.k.a. DJ Venom, is here. Good morning to you, Josue Pais. Josue Pais is also the proprietor of Harry Beast Dog Parlor. Get to know Harry Beast Dog Parlor. Check him out online on Facebook and Instagram. New England Congregational Church, 406 West Galena Boulevard in Aurora, will open fall programs on Sunday, September 11th with the Community Fall Festival. The public is invited. Admission and parking are free. Uh, Reverend Brandon Perrine, sen senior minister, said, join for an outdoor fall festival luncheon on the South Lawn following 10 a.m. worship service. We will provide the 
table service roasted chicken breasts, sloppy joes with root beer floats by the Board of Missions. Yikes, that sounds good. Family-friendly activities will include lawn games, a bounce house on the church lawn, and fun glitter tattoos provided by dots and splashes. Reverend Perrine adds, here at New England Congregational Church, excuse me, we're excited about fall and the launch of a fresh program year in September. We'll kick it all off with Rally Sunday and the Fall Festival, September 11th. For more information, you can call 630-897-8721. That number again is 630-897-8721. Aisha Saxon, good morning to you as well, dear friend. Good to see all of you guys today. Michael Rayford is here. Michael Rayford, good to know, or excuse me, get to know Michael Rayford at... Michael Rayford Media, hashtag how money works. He's done a great number of financial literacy courses, particularly for the youth. So we like to keep his information in our rotation. Good stuff. The time is 8, 10 a.m. I hope you guys are all doing good. I hope that you, Aisha Saxon, and Michael Rayford had a good weekend. Let us know what you did in the chat. Uh, man, so yeah, The look. You know what? Here's what else was cool about it. Tell you, a, tell you a little story. This was cool. I saw, we had the hip hop show, right? I saw like four of my Instagram friends, four listeners that I never met before in real life until the hip hop show. That was cool. That was really cool. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was like, you know, that's, that's what's bringing us together, man. One of the people I saw and met was Vanessa Rodriguez Aguirre. Good morning, Vanessa Rodriguez Aguirre. That was really cool. I got to see our listeners and their families out and about. Man, it was awesome. So, so good to see you dear people uh, in the flesh, having a good time, smiling, laughing, supporting local. That's the way to do it. Okay. Michael Rayford said he moved all weekend. Well, Mike, I hope that you take another day off to rest. You need some rest after moving. You know, one of the things about moving that's interesting, but it kind of sucks. It's like, you know, I remember moving into a new place and I remember thinking like, you know what? I got some money now. I'm not going to move. I'm going to pay some movers. But then it's like, you know, you see how much it'll cost to pay movers and you're like, you know what? I need that money. So I'm just going to do it myself. I just pack my own boxes and save a little bit. But sometimes it is good to have movers. For the for the big stuff, like, you know, I don't I don't do the beds and all that. Big heavy, not doing that anymore. Boxes, I got my own boxes, but I can afford movers now. All right, the time is 8:12. Good morning all of you great people. Good to see you guys. Monica will return tomorrow. For the news of Buenos Dias, Aurora has a great show for you tomorrow. Uh, as I mentioned before we continue on with the rest of the news, uh, Good Morning Aurora and Buenos Dias, Aurora going to a brand new schedule next week. Um, so the schedule will be as follows. Good Morning Aurora will be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And Buenos Dias, Aurora will be Tuesday and Thursday. So Buenos Dias, Aurora picks up two days and I get to chill for two days. So it'll be, you know, a good, healthy news diet for you all right uh 8 13 is the time so i told you guys about the museum of tolerance that is cool uh yesterday as you will know we had where is it where is it where is it where is it how do i lose the news on my own desk um yesterday as you guys know we had the young men of the aurora youth council on the show um, they were really cool to talk to. We had Gabriel Bradford on. Um, great to know what they do. They meet the second Wednesday of the month from 4.30 to 5.30 p.m. Um, and they meet at City Hall. So the whole purpose of the Youth Council is to update and inform the City Council on um, things that young people need. So mental health resources was one of the things that we talked about that they want to see. Also, they want to see uh, help with financial literacy for young people. Uh, that was good to know. And when I was talking to them, what I got from them was the sense that all three of them like taking part in local government. I thought that was cool. 
I like that. They want to take part in local government. They like getting to know what it means. They like, um, you know, they like the Open Meetings Act and things like that. They understand they need a quorum to move things. They understand what the agenda items are. Um, so it's really cool to see them take part and get something out of it. Uh, but when I was talking to them, I did notice that uh, there's still a couple of open spots that they have that they mentioned here, actually. So um, all of the area high schools and some of the private schools are also represented on the council, but there are spots. They have 17 members. Uh, well, there's a capacity for 17 members, but there are openings that are available for high school students from Matea, uh, Wabonzi Valley, West Aurora, and Aurora Central Catholic High School. I believe. Um, so if you know any young people who go to those schools and they're interested in being a part of it, let them know um, because they can definitely use the help. Um, but it was cool to talk to these young guys. These people, they know what they're doing. They know what they're in it for. They know what they want to see. And what was really cool to see was they talked about the, um, we know it as the work-life balance because many of us are no longer in school. Um, but they understand the education life balance too. Um, Pranette, Pranette Swain was one of the young people. He goes to IMSA that we interviewed yesterday. And uh, he talked about how, you know, he's cramming for tests. He's studying all night, not getting enough sleep. That's not good. So um, the education, life balance, that's key to focus on. Young people should not be fatiguing themselves just for the edu uh, education. Yes, it's important to do good, but it's also important to take care of yourself because what you don't want to do is you don't want to be old and be creaky and your joints don't work and your knees have given out and you can no longer walk and your friends will say what happened to you man come on you're only 19 years old and you'll say ah oh, it's because i spent all of my time Studying and not eating healthy. The time is 8.17 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Maria Saltageri, good morning. Maria Chirito, good morning. Tracy Duran, good morning. Vanessa Rodriguez Aguirre, it was great seeing you in real life. Aw, oh, thank you. I, you know what? Yay! It was great seeing you, too. You know, it's funny. You do this, and people are just Facebook profile pictures. That's all they are, right? You don't shake hands anymore. We just click on your picture. What's this world coming to? We don't know. But in the meantime, we've got news for you. Okay, so I have, I got something to talk to you guys about. And I do have a rant, too, for you. You'll love that. Uh, Michael Rayford says, I just emailed you a flyer for a new event. Please share when you can. Not a problem, Mr. Rayford. Not a problem. Sir. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tell you about this, which is the Aurora 88's Roller Derby Info. See that? You like roller skating? You can do so with the Roller Derby. I got that information for you. We'll get to that. But first, before I get to that, I want to tell you. A very good morning to you all. Thank you, you awesome person. Get to know I the Angeles, located at 6 West Downer Place in Zenloft. Maria Saltageri is a dear friend of our show. Um, I want to tell you about the Youth Advisory Committee. Now, I know what you're thinking. Curtis, you just told us about the Roar Youth Council. That's right. I did. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot to something new regarding youth. This is important. Why is it important? Because the the ground is now the 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 stage has been set to hand off what we're doing to the next generation. I thought this was good news, and I wanted to bring it up since I just saw this after talking to the young men yesterday. Monday, September nineteenth, from four to five p.m., will be the launch of the Youth Advisory Committee. This is. Um, hosted by the Office of State Representative Barbara Hernandez and the Alive Teen Center. So, attention to young people aged 13 to 18. This is your opportunity to get involved in state government. The Youth Advisory Committee is a safe environment to discuss obstacles and current laws that affect the lives of students. 
The goal is to present students' proposals as bills and pass the state law. No experience or prior knowledge of politics is needed, just a willingness to learn. Now, the meetings are going to be held at Alive Aurora, 78 South of South Street. Zoom in on this so you guys can. That's it. You see that? We got the flyer right here. Come on now. Look at that. Now, that's the real news for you. Yeah, that's the real news for you. How about that? Um, so you have to uh, register to sign up. The registration link is on here. I have this. I'll share it to you guys later on today. Once again, it's going to be Monday, September 19th from 4 to 5 p.m. If you have any questions about it, call 630-270-1848. That number again is 630-270-1848. Um, Again, ages 13 to 18, this is a great way to get started and to get involved. I would say another great way besides this is to intern. If you can, you can learn a lot by interning, and it's a great way to get your feet wet. Learn something new. Learn. Open your mind. Expand your horizons. Do it. Learn all you can. So you may think, I, I, you, you know, you hear me say it, right? You hear us talk about it. You hear people get interviewed on the show about it. And what do we always tell you? Do what you can. Learn what you can. We don't know everything. And if we start now, that makes our tomorrow better. Victoria Hyla Maldonado is here. Good morning to you, Victoria Hyla Maldonado. Victoria is a fantastic author. She's also an editor. If you have something on your mind, you can write about it. You can be an author. You can create a world of your own. That's right. Gloria Gerardo is here as well. Good morning to you, Aurora. I hope you had yourself a nice Labor Day weekend. Have a nice day today. Have a blessed day today. Amen. Thank you very much for that. And Tracy Duran is here as well. Good morning, my wonderful friends. Yes, Tracy, you know what? I I don't know if anybody else does this, but when you see certain people come through, it's just a beautiful thing. Uh, I also got something else to tell you guys about, and it qualifies as... Time is now 8.22 a.m. You are listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast, the Great American Morning Show. It's 8.22 a.m. Okay, um, the sixth annual Cups Bra Drive will be Friday, October 7th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Aurora Regional Fire Museum, 53 North Broadway, right in downtown Aurora, the intersection of New York and Broadway. Um, join for the sixth annual Bra Drive. This year will be larger than ever. Bring your bra donations to the Fire Museum and stay for a night of music, food, local vendors, a silent auction, a photo booth, and a free bralette giveaway. Uh, tickets are available online. For more information, you can call 630-636-1335. The number again is 630-636-1335. Uh, we have the flyer for this. The link is embedded in the flyer. Also, there's a QR code attached to it that you can use to purchase tickets for yourself. Get to know it and save the date. Okay. Uh, now, here's where the conversation gets really fun. Uh, roller Derby Fall Recruitment is back, ladies and gentlemen. Now seeking new skaters, referees, and non-skating officials. Hold on, let me get, let me, let me do this. Ooh, look at that. You never see nothing like that. Ah, I can, I can almost touch you with it. You see that? You're at home looking at my... I got cocoa butter on, so I'm not ashy. Look at that. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Info night is what it's called. Uh, Info night and the Super Friends scrimmage will be Sunday, September 18th at 8 p.m. at the Aurora Skate Center, 34 West 113 Montgomery Road in Aurora, Illinois. Learn what it takes to be an 88 and watch a roller derby scrimmage. Okay. Aurora 88 says Women's Flat Track Roller Derby. Thank you to Aurora Fast Print as a sponsor as well. Um, 
Yeah, this is great stuff. We're fans of the Aurora 88. And let me tell you about the Aurora 88. So Stephanie Wheatley, dear friend, you know what? We had the hip hop show. She came through there. She came through. She brought us flyers. And she said, Curtis, you do me a favor? I said, yeah. She said, would you promote this? I said, absolutely, we'll promote it. You know why we'll promote it? For two reasons. One, it's local. And two, it's positive. You cannot beat the Aurora 88s. Get to know them and what they do. We also have their um, two of their other upcoming events on our window in front of our fantastic news studio. So come on down here to 5 East Downer Place, Sweet Tea. Stand outside and you will see the flyer. You can scan the QR code in person and join the ladies of the Aurora 88 Derby. The time is 8.25 a.m. You are listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora. Cindy Morales is here. She says, yes, internships are amazing. Or if you're looking for teen jobs, go to Terry Smith Roads for more information. Thank you for that. Janice Collins is here. Get to know Bulldog Nutrition in Batavia. I'm a fan of nutrition. And you should be a fan of nutrition, too. And if you love Batavia, you should know about Bulldog Nutrition. John Schomer is here. Good morning, John Schomer. Linda Critchlow is here. Hello there. And Ellen Brady. Those roller derby gals are awesome. Stephanie Wheatley. Shouts out. See, that's what we do. Hit the clap for this. You know, just do it. Yay! Okay. All right. We're having fun. We are having a lot of fun today. Before I get into it, now I got an article. That I'm going to read uh, for you guys here. But before we get into this, let me just take a pause. Let's 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 just take a pause real quick. I want to I want to say that in the last two months now, what have we noticed? Have you guys noticed? Have you noticed what have you noticed what's going on in, in Aurora? I have. I've seen some things. I'm going to tell you one more time. Go to the intersection of Broadway and Galena, the terminal building. It's coming back to life. Look at it. Now they got the nice marble out front. If you touch it, it's all smooth. It's not even rough. And the windows are clean. They got the etching on the windows. You seen it? You can see all the way through the whole store. The glass is nice. Look at it. Check it out. If you're one of those people who was out early in the morning, like me, and you're at that intersection, take a look. Just look up. You'll see lights on. You'll see new fixtures. You'll see beautiful things. I'm liking it. We got a lot of development taking place here in our fantastic city of downtown Aurora. And if you thought that that was it, you'd be wrong. You got Craft Urban. I see people out there sitting down and having a good time. Oh, yeah, wow. You know, in the patio that they got right there on Stope and Downer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeing some good things. I'm seeing some good things. I'm seeing some great people. And I'm seeing some wonderful, fantastic community stuff that really makes me happy. So I hope, just like you hope, I hope that our city continues to do good. I hope our city continues to prosper. I hope our city continues to grow in a positive fashion so that we can all come up and benefit together. The time is 8.28 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. Oh, my goodness gracious. We got some more. September 20th from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. How Money Works for College. Register for it. You know you need it. Learn how to prepare for the FAFSA applications due October 1st and how to pay for and plan for college. Uh, online registration is available. There is a QR code embedded in this flyer, which I will share for you guys. Uh, this will be September 20th, once again, at 1 Trans Am Plaza Drive, Suite 500 in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. Uh, How Money Works has been featured on many great media outlets, including CNBC, ABC, Fox, CBS, Wall Street Journal, CNN, and U.S. News. 
Shout out to our dear friend Michael Rayford for that. We appreciate it. I love how the terminal building is coming back to life. The same for the Hobbs building too. It's looking really nice. Thank you very much for that, Tracy Duran. Tracy says, I was out with my sister and her family on Saturday for the Alice in Wonderland scavenger hunt, and she was shocked at how nice downtown looks now and didn't realize all the new restaurants goes to show. She needs to follow Good Morning Aurora and me. That's a great plug in. Thank you very much for that, Tracy Duran. Um, yeah, when I was at the hip hop show, there were some folks there. Jennifer Ryan Maiden had some friends that came through. I think she said they were from Wisconsin, uh, from Wisconsin all the way to the second largest city in Illinois. Awesome stuff. Okay, uh, you know what? I've got one more thing. I've got some music. I've got classical guitar instructions coming up and then I will get to the new APD website so let me deliver that let me deliver this to you guys real quick and then I will give you APD's new website all right AU's Shingolf Center 1315 Prairie Street in Aurora will host two new exhibitions by Geneva and Warrenville artists this sounds cool remembrance of things present works by Rita Grinzi and Anna Zanuck it showcases the Geneva artists and sound carvings. Rick Larson features the Warrenville artist. The opening reception will be Tuesday, September 13th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. At 6.30 p.m., uh, Larson, Rick Larson, AU classical guitar instructor with Jim Perona and Francis Balquin, will perform a classical guitar presentation. The regular hours, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesday through December 9th. Admission and parking are free. Natasha Ritzma, Shingo director, said Zanuck and Grinzi create process-driven abstract work that is poetic, playful, and evocative. Grinzi in, uh, creates installations, sculptures, and drawings, while Zanuck works primarily in watercolor and ceramics. Excellent. Inspired by literature, material exploration, and meditative practices, their works in the exhibition explore the themes of migration, memory, language, and nature of beauty. Sound Carvings showcases handmade guitars by Larson. Uh, he creates custom commissioned classical guitars for clients such as Jim Perona, Gig Master's top national guitarist and award-winning virtuoso Rene Izquierdo. The exhibit visually portrays Larson's process. From selecting distinct woods originating in multiple continents to carving and assembling core parts of the instrument and the labor-intensive process of polishing the final creation. Ritzma said, we are thrilled to have the opportunity to showcase a variety of outstanding local talent this fall at Aurora University. Grinzi's work is bold, colorful, and tactile as well, as thoughtful and compassionate at its core. Zanuck's stunning watercolors are meditative, contemplative, and ethereal. Larson's exhibit illustrates the artistry and labor-intensive process of creating exquisite, handmade, classical guitars. Fantastic stuff. The time is 8.33 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. That's brand new information coming from our friends of Aurora University, specifically the Shingo Center, hosting the works of artists in Geneva and Warrenville. Once again, the opening reception will be Tuesday, September 13th, starting at 5 p.m. at the AU Shingold Center, 1315 Prairie Street in Aurora. Okay. Ellen Brady says, Tracy Duran, I ate at Craft Urban for the first time on Saturday. Oh, you did, huh? Did you like it? How was it? Was it good? Tell us what you had. Um, I, I saw some great pictures. The food looked really good. All right. So there is, here's the news that I have. Brand new cool stuff on the headlines today. Uh, APD has launched a new website aimed at connecting officers with residents and increasing transparency with crime statistics. You know what? Hold on a second. Scratch that up, dude. You know what? Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before I get into this news, 
We're going to do something new here on the show. I need a refill on my coffee, which is right over there, but I have to stand up to get it. You may need a refill on your coffee, too. So here's what we're going to do. We want to do something fun together. Let's take a commercial. We're going to take a brief commercial. I'm going to stay online and let's get a refill on our coffee. back hey if the only tool you have is a hammer every problem has to be a nail we are back okay now uh let's get into this article i thought this was cool i bring this up for two main reasons number one is it's helpful news regarding uh apd in the local community but i also bring it up because a lot of times when I skim my news and headlines, one of the things I'm constantly bombarded with is statements or all kinds of flack about what the police are not doing, this, that, and the other. And life right now for me is, life is, life is really interesting right now. Strangely enough, the police support Good Morning Aurora. Now, that's not strange. I don't say strangely enough, like, that, but it is something that's, it's a little, how can I, it, it is, it's special. It's special. It is a weird thing. It, it is, it is special. I was at City Hall, right? I was at City Hall chilling, watching one of the City Hall proceedings. And there's a police officer in there. His name is Sully. Officer Sully. Shout out to Officer Sully. He's got tattoos. A lot of tattoos. Now, uh, I've seen him before. And he saw me with the Good Morning Roar shirt on one day. Every time he sees me, now he sees me and he gives me the what's up. So, like, I've always felt like police departments don't do a good job of getting the information out there. They're always reacting rather than being proactive. So what I try to do with the show is connect people with information. That's the one part. But I also try to curb the crap, right, by giving you the information early. So that so the, the question is not going to be, oh, well, when was the last time APD? Uh, they should make a website where we have, well, it, here it is. So I try to, you know, I, I try to, I try to sift through the BS by putting the news out there first. So that way you have it and you can share it with other people. But anyway, I digress, but you know how I do. I like to talk to you. Okay. Uh, here we go. Aurora police have launched a new website aimed at connecting officers with residents and increasing transparency with crime statistics and data. Tom Hebert, good morning. The website, uh, which I'll make, I'll post a link later, features a transparency hub with a crime summary dashboard that looks at the rates of various crimes over the last three years in the city. Now that alone is interesting. For instance, the hub shows murders have decreased in Aurora from 11 murders in 2020, 6 in 2021, and only 2 to date in 2022. Meanwhile, criminal sexual assault numbers increased in 2021, with 68 assaults in 2020 and 133 assaults in 2021. There have been 60 criminal sexual assaults so far in 2022, according to the numbers. The data will be updated every two weeks, according to the website, which also lists traffic offense statistics. Residents can view their specific neighborhood and see any calls police responded to in that area and view the category of the call. Rewind that. Let's read that again. 
Residents can view their specific neighborhood and see any calls police responded to in that area and view the category of the call. Now that obviously on its face is good news, obviously. That's a good thing. I mean, I, I, I don't see, I, there's, a, I don't, there's nobody who can poke a hole in that balloon. It continues, quote, a positive relationship between the community and its police department fostered by trust and confidence is essential to law enforcement. Close quote. That's according to Aurora Police Chief Keith Cross in a statement. The website also shows employment opportunities and features a dashboard on the diversity within the department. Chief Cross said it's one of his goals to increase diversity within APD. Currently, around 67.4% of officers are white, 6.3% are black, and 23.9% are Latin. X. It says Latin X here. Data shows. Around 86% are male and 14% are female. Residents are also able to look at ward maps and see who the community oriented policing officer is for their neighborhood and access their contact information. There's also a non-emergency community crime area where people can submit a location and problem they'd like police to address. The department also announced launching a My90 public surveying tool, which uses a third party data and survey collection tool that collects anonymous feedback from the community and officers. Now, I am going to put a flag at that point right there. Let me read that again. And then we'll break that down. The department also announced launching a My90 public surveying tool, which uses a third party data and survey collection tool that collects anonymous feedback from the community and officers. So, for those who need it broken down further, that technology will collect your information. Don't let that be a mystery. Don't think that it wouldn't have it's it's a third party data and survey collection tool it will collect your information it's called my 90 public surveying tool now i have two points to make further on this the first one is this me personally I, look i'll be honest with you you guys listen you we know each other here right honestly i think if there is an ability for you to submit a location to a problem that you want police to address, I think that that's worth giving up. And I'm just using that phrase at the moment because I don't have a better one. Uh, I think that's worth giving up a little bit of privacy. Now, that's up to you. Maybe you don't think that it's worth it. But I think that there's obviously a trade-off. You know, it's, it's, it's like people wanting to be, it's like people wanting to be safe, but not really understanding what it takes to have complete safety. But I think that all of these tools are a good thing. I'm looking forward to this, so we'll see what happens. What do you guys think about it? Let me know in the chat. The time is 8.43 a.m. Uh, let me know what you think about this new website. Aimed at connecting officers with residents and increasing transparency with crime statistics and data, it will show you what's happening in your own ward. That's a good thing, right? Okay. Uh, Josie Mendoza Geller is here. She says, good morning. I'm in central Illinois heading to visit my son in Carbondale. We'll have a wonderful and safe trip we need a gams meetup yeah we do we do need a gams meetup we're gonna have one here pretty soon i think it's great that apd is getting information out there and also opening up to transparency to show what is going on i think so too i think so too i think that's a good thing i'm happy to hear that uh i think it's really good news it's not it's it's not it's not the magic bullet it's not the cure all for crime, um, but I think that I think that at least when it comes to addressing what the community wants, more information, it'll certainly do that. Okay, so I've got a um, couple new pieces of news for you guys too. Lots of great things are happening. 
Uh, Fox Valley Hands of Hope is hosting the Swing for Hope inaugural mini golf family fundraiser. That'll be Friday, September 16th. Registration begins at 5 p.m. And the activities start uh, at 6 p.m. sharp. The code for you to use is Big Golf to get 20% off for ticket prices. Uh, there's a QR code on the flyer, which we were sent. Uh, I will post that for you guys. Please share that information. Fox Valley Hands of Hope uh, has many services, and they are all in regards to uh, assisting and helping families who are grieving after the loss of a loved one. Get to know Fox Valley Hands of Hope. We've had them in our news uh, for a long time now. So if you hear anything regarding their activities, please share if you can. They host a um, they host a fundraise. It's like a um, oh, it's a dinner at there's a forest preserve that they. Anyway, it's it's a lunch gathering that they host at this forest preserve. Um, and the whole purpose of that is if there's anyone who's recently lost a family member and they need someone to talk to, they can come there, their select times, and they gather together uh, and they share in fellowship with each other. Uh, that's something that I'd like to highlight and promote. And it goes with anything else that we do on this show. If it's If it's something that will help people get through a difficult time and a difficult moment, uh, we try to bring that up. I don't think people really take the time to realize that, you know, people that you you don't know what another person is going through in their life. You really don't. People have a hard time and they're just trying to make it from day to day. Um, and, you know, people get caught up in work, kids, bills and doing stuff. Uh, just remember, it's not always raining only on your house. Uh, the time is 846. All right. Let me keep going. Uh, the Sheriff of Kane County and the Aurora Public Library from 4 to 6 p.m. Tuesday, September 13th, will be hosting the Secretary of State Prep event. ID cards, driver restoration privileges, and more. Uh, you must register by noon on Monday, the 12th of September. There is a link. I've shared this. Hit the link on that code. There's also a QR code uh, embedded on that flyer. Please check that out. Um, if you need help of any fashion with the uh, states, with the Secretary of State, there's more ways to do that than just by going to the DMV. A whole lot of online services are being made or uh, more readily accessible to the public. Uh, we like to shout those out when they are available. Okay, a couple more things, and I'm going to end this show on an interesting note for you guys today. I guarantee you that. All right. Uh, the Kids Expo is coming up. That's going to be the 10th state representative, Stephanie Kifowit, and the Illinois House District 84 are hosting it. It's going to be at Phillips Park uh, from 10 a.m. to noon. Rain or shine, fire trucks, police cars, medevac, and much more. Admission is free. Open to the public. For more information, call 630-585-1308. You can also go online to ildistrict84.com. Once again, ildistrict84.com. State Representative Stephanie Kefowit is a great friend of the show. She is also a Marine Corps veteran. Shout out to her, her service, and everything that she does for her constituents. Okay. Let's keep it going. You know, I'd love, I'd, man, if I only knew, if I only knew all those years ago when my dad was making fun of me, saying that I had a face for radio, if I only knew, but my dad supports me, he loves me. Okay. New Volunteer Open House, the Aurora Area Interfaith Food Pantry on Monday, September 12th. From noon to 1 p.m., we'll host the first quarterly new volunteer open house. Learn what volunteering is like at the food pantry. Take a tour and enjoy some light refreshments. All attendees will be entered into a raffle drawing for a free meal prep basket. Wow. Once again, noon to 1 p.m., uh, Aurora Area Interfaith Food Pantry is on Jericho Road. I don't have the address at the moment, and they didn't put it on this flyer either. Um, but you can just Google it. It's a well-known place, and the staff there are friends of the show. Shout out to Shannon Cameron. She came by our hip-hop show, uh, which was really cool. Great to see her. All right, last piece of news. The last piece of news before I exit for you guys is Aurora Downtown hosting the Sugar Skull City themed art and market 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. 
at Society 57 on Saturday, November 5th. Once again, downtown Aurora is going to be Sugar Skull City from October 15th to November 6th. That will coincide with Day of the Dead events during First Fridays on November 4th as part of Sugar Skull City. Aurora downtown announced a call for art. Artists of all skill levels are invited to submit a 12 by 18 inch work depicting Pan de Muerto, a traditional Mexican sweetbread used to celebrate Day of the Dead. Now, once your artwork is completed, send a PDF to info at auroradowntown.org or drop the artwork off at Aurora Fast Print. All ages and abilities, no watermarks, signatures, or other identification can be added to the print, please. Uh, the pieces will be printed and displayed in downtown storefronts from August 15th to November 6th. After the show, prints will not be returned to you. QR codes and or logos could be added to prints by Aurora Downtown. Town. Uh, participants who have their print displayed in a storefront will receive a $25 gift card from a randomly drawn downtown Aurora business, one per household. That does not apply to school groups or other organizations with multiple submissions. Uh, yeah, prints of submitted works could be available to the public for purchase for a donation to benefit Atzere Dia de los Muertos, a 501c3. At First Fridays on November 4th. For more information online, go to auroradowntown.org. Once again, auroradowntown.org. Michael Rayford says, Internships and volunteering can get kids grants and scholarships for college free money. Word up with that. Times 851. Okay. I did it. I landed the plane. All right. So, um, here's the thing. September 17th is a big day that weekend. Um, we have the um, Neighbor Project has Starry Night going on. That's going to be their uh, gala fundraising benefit event in downtown Aurora. Uh, there will be the entertainment portion, which takes place at the venue across the street from their main office at 32 South Broadway. Uh, tickets are available. We shared that link as well with the QR code to purchase. Um, now, you should definitely support this initiative. Um, this is one of many ways that different folks in the community who have gone from renting to home ownership can be celebrated. Also, the Aurora Financial Empowerment Center, 712 South River Street in Aurora, has uh, started to pres uh, have a great calendar of events uh, coming up and already announced uh, financial literacy Free courses for the public are offered there at that location. If you or anyone you know has any questions about hosting an event at the Aurora Financial Empowerment Center, if you are a realtor or if you are someone who has something to offer in regards to information or a presentation to help anyone in the community in financial literacy, you should definitely reach out to the Neighbor Project or you can uh, send an email to us at goodmorningaurorail at gmail.com and we will connect you with the right people. I'd also like to say that I hope all of you fantastic people uh, continue to come out and support the local businesses in town. Um, the next first Friday is going to be a lot of fun, but also stay tuned because Good Morning Aurora has some interesting things that we will continue to do outside of our regular morning show and regular morning hours. It's not just a morning show. We're going to create a movement here in the city of Aurora. Um, that's it. It's 8.53. We've got a busy day today. we got to get ready for Starry Night, so we're going to let you guys go few minutes early. I hope you have a blessed, fantastic day. Buenos dias, Aurora returns tomorrow with another great show. Take care of yourself and each other.